All right, so considering the fact that I got a pretty solid response, a good response, good fanfare for the Carlos Quadras video, the Who is Carlos Quadras video, considering the fact um, that he's about to be fighting the number one pound for pound um, in flyweight moving up, Roman Chuckle Tito Gonzalez, that's, you know, to be expected by, by and large, um, especially considering the fact that it's going to be on HBO, it's going to be, uh, you know, showcased on the major Western networks, major English-speaking networks, so... Um, you know, there's a little bit more uh, fanfare, a little bit more just collective consciousness with regard to people understanding who the fighters are and who the fight, what the fight is about, um, at least um, in a partial respect, you know. But uh, I wanted to give some attention to some of the other fighters at what is what ostensibly I tend to call the flyweights, 105 to 115 pounds. Um, I'm probably going to save most of the 115 pounders for later videos because of the fact that they'll probably be a bit more likely to be featured on the major networks, HBO, Showtime, PBC, etc. And, or, you know, some of them have been in the past as well. Um, speaking particularly of uh, Koi Kono and uh, Michio Arroyo. Um, but I wanted to, you know, give a little bit of shine to, um, to, the, uh, to the other weight classes down uh, at 112. 108 and 105 and basically the the current champions there the current top fighters there the current stars there and also guys that have you know achieved a good bit and I think deserve some props for it you know deserve some recognition for all that they've done even if it's just you know a simple YouTube video by yours truly um, but for this video I wanted to concentrate on one Katsunari Takayama of Osaka Japan he is the current WBO minimum weight champion the Basically, the the strawweight champion, the mini flyweight champion, 105 pounds, and this is now the sixth time in his career that he has been a world champion. Managed to pull off a little bit of a hat trick in the fact that he's collected all four of the major belts at 105 pounds. He uh, he of course just recently collected the WBO. His first belt, of course, was the WBA. He previously had the uh, or, I'm sorry, his first belt was the WBC. Um, followed by the WBA, followed by the IBF, and then finally he managed to get uh, the, both the WBO and the IBF in a unification fight, a unifier fight, and finally he has just re-won the WBO after having lost it um, just a little over a year ago. So within a year he managed to get himself another title. He just uh, has done a very solid job, and he's shown that in spite of the fact that he had some early messed ups in his career against... I mean, ostensibly great fighters in their own right, guys that are, you know, some of the who's who essentially at 105 pounds over the past 10 plus years. Um, I mean, I, th I think that he's just done a, a great job. You know, he's basically lost to the, the ATGs of this weight class. And I think by virtue of his longevity, he has essentially kind of made himself into an ATG. So let me get to it. Um, of course, you know, as I mentioned before, he turned pro at age 17. Young fighter, um, wind up having a little bit of a misstep after a couple of years of being pro. He wound up getting TKO'd in, in a, the ninth round of a 10 rounder against uh, Masato Hatakiyama. Um, but in spite of that, he managed to recover, rack up several more wins over, uh, over good opposition. Wind up fighting the WBC champion at the time, Isaac Bustos, of course, one of the top fighters at the time. Defeated him by unanimous decision, um, you know, a competitive decision, but one that uh, Takayama won, you know, pretty fairly. He then wound up losing, unfortunately, in his first defense to Eagle Denjun Lafan, uh, who is also known as Eagle Kiowa, a fighter from Thailand who mostly fought out of uh, Japan, hence the name Eagle Kiowa or Eagle Akakura, which is um, basically like a, a, a Japanese kind of portmanteau um, nickname that he kind of adopted since he made his home in Japan in spite of the fact that he was originally from Thailand. A bit of a rare uh, fighter to, to do something like that. But, you know, it's, uh, it was a case of he saw where the money was. And um, Kyo is definitely going to be going down himself as an ATG. 18-2, 6 knockouts. Um, not necessarily an extensive record, but he had made a number of defenses before he eventually um, lost his title to Oleron Sasamachai. But, you know, getting back to Takayama, he then... Uh, defeated Carlos Melo a couple fights later to get the WBA interim version of the minimum weight title. Um, wound up losing that by a split decision. This was a very uh, competitive and close decision, of course. You know, a split decision loss to Yutaka Nida in Japan, um, in, excuse me, in Tokyo, Japan. 
Yutakanida being from uh, Yokohama, a um, bit of a rival city there. And Yutakanida is largely known for being the first guy for that Roman Gonzalez defeated on his way to becoming um, a world champion. Basically the first world title he ever won, he defeated Yutakanida for. And at the time, Yutakanida was the number one fighter at the weight class. He was the number one fighter at 105 pounds, especially in the absence of Ivan Calderon. Whereas before him and Ivan Calderon were pretty much neck and neck as the top fighters. It was, it was pretty much either one. You could name number one, number two. You could flip-flop them however you wanted to. But um, Calderon uh, moved out of the division around that time up to 108 pounds. Um, so that left neither with uh, the sole positioning as the top fighter. Of course, um, eventually... At right, you know, not too long after Roman Gonzalez defeated Nida for that very title, um, Takayama became a mandatory for the same, that exact same title, the WBA title, once again. Fought against Roman Gonzalez and wound up losing a unanimous decision to him. And of course, you know, from there he managed to recover. He went down to South Africa, defeated a prospect by the name of Shepo Lefele, which was an IBF title eliminator. Which got him, which earned him an immediate shot at the then champion Nkosanati Joyi of South Africa, who personally I consider just one of the the nicest, classiest boxers to uh, to come out of uh, that country, to come out of South Africa. Just a really, really skilled boxer, um, really good technique, just a very skilled guy. Has good power too. He was very tall for the weight. Um, you know, he knew how to use his height accordingly. Good power in in the whole nine. Um, but in essence he fought uh Joe Yi the first time wound up uh ending the first fight in a no contest and wound up getting stopped on a i believe it was a clash of heads that caused the cut um got stopped before the fourth round so they call, got called a no contest they wound up fighting about a year later for the same belt of course they ran it back and uh, Nkosanati Joe Yi defeated Takayama as well just uh, about the same way that uh, Roman Gonzalez had done um, literally, just the scores were just slightly closer. Basically, uh, just about a point or two points differential on the three judges' scorecards. But once again, I mean, Joe Yi was somebody that I consider um, or just a top fighter, um, which is why it was actually pretty uh, surprising when he wound up getting upset by Mario Rodriguez of Mexico. Was, he was a guy that was a big underdog, and uh, Mario Rodriguez managed to come in and upset it. Um, around that same time that Rodriguez upset Joe Yi. Uh, Takayama basically went right back into the uh, the IBF ranks trying to, to win another eliminator. Um, wound up actually losing a close and controversial split decision to Mateo Handig of the Philippines. And this is a fight that took place in the Philippines. Um, in spite of the fact that Handig won, I'm not exactly sure about the circumstances regarding why Handig wound up not fighting Rodriguez. I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that like Joey and Rodriguez going back and forth with regards to um, rematch clauses and things of that nature. Joe Yi wound up incidentally moving up to 108. Handi kind of got left in the cold and in the midst of that um, decided to fight a different fight. Excuse me. He wound up fighting against, I'm blanking on his name now, Ganigan Lopez. Ganigan Lopez defeated Mateo Handi for the, uh, the w, for basically a WBC regional title. Um, I think that's probably what wound up disqualifying him from being able to get back into the ranks as um, a ma IBF mandatory, which is in essence why Takayama wound up fighting Mario Rodriguez for that same IBF belt that Rodriguez took off of Joe Yi and that Joe Yi had defeated, um, successfully defended against Takayama. Uh, Takayama defeated Mario Rodriguez in spite of getting dropped in the third round uh, by unanimous decision. Um, good close fight. It was a fight that took place in Mexico. So, you know, fair scoring on uh, Rodriguez's behalf. It took place in his home country. And he made a few defenses before he wound up deciding to try to unify against Francisco Chiwas Rodriguez Jr. Um, uh, and funny enough, um, another guy that fought Roma Chocolatito Gonzalez. So they, they basically had a common opponent. Um, they had both uh, lo lost to him, but um, now they were basically looking to see who was the baddest guy at 105 pounds between the two of them. And honestly, um, 2014, this was the fight of the year. And, and it, the 12th round was the round of the year. Just an incredible fight, all action, fast paced, good, good technique on display, but just so many punches thrown. And so much just um, 
so many quick transitions, constant offense and defensive uh, transitions on display. It was like a Israel Vasquez versus Rafael Marquez type fight. That's pretty much what it was. Just a, a fun fight to watch. Like I said, the 12th round was really incredible stuff. Both of them going at it. Uh, Takayama feeling like he needed a knockout to win. Rodriguez just going at it, you know, just to do so to try and get a knockout from in front of the home crowd. Um, Rodriguez, of course, wound up winning that by unanimous decision. Um, quickly wound up actually vacating those titles, though. So his next fight, Takayama's next fight, wound up being against Go Odaira for the vacant versions of both the IBF and the WBO championships. He defeated Go Odaira by technical knockout in the seventh round in a fight that was actually pretty close as well. You know, Go Odaira was another fighter that was, um, you know, pretty highly ranked, uh, pretty well skilled, pretty uh, experienced in his own right in terms of fighting, you know, a decent level of opposition. Then went on to defeat one uh, Tirupong Utaida, who's actually potentially going to be, is a guy that you may be hearing from me, you know, fairly soon, considering the fact that he's a fighter from Thailand, and um, he's, he's basically really highly ranked at both 105 and 108 right now. He's a little bit of a floater. He's a guy that upset Ryo Miyazaki, the guy that lost the fight I did the other day, that I covered the other day um, against Ryo Chitaguchi. Uh, Utaida, however, um, actually knocked Ryo Miyazaki out in the third round, so he pulled off a bit of an upset in that regard. Um, there was no upset to be had against Takayama, however. Takayama defeated him by a ninth round, unanimous technical decision. Pretty uh, clear scores for Takayama. One of them was close, but the other two were very, very wide um, when it got stopped in the ninth. Next up fought Ryuji Hara, uh, 19-1 contender. Defeated him by an eighth round technical knockout. Followed by a few months after that, back in December 31st of last year, on the annual one of the annual New Year's cards that uh, Japan tends to have. He wound up losing the IBF minimum weight championship to Jose Argumedo of Mexico, a guy that still holds that same title to this day, um, but has now since recovered, of course, as I reported, what was that, about a week and a half ago, against Riku Kano. Riku Kano, a fellow fighter from Japan, defeated him for the vacant WBO world minimum weight title in light of the fact that uh, Kose Tanaka... Uh, who was the former champion moved up to 108 pounds so with that I pretty much just gave you guys just a, a general overview of Katsunari Takayama a guy who yes he has a bunch of losses on his record yes he's lost to uh, some of the best fighters to pretty much come about at the division that he fights at 105 pounds and he, not only at 105 pounds but I mean divisions beyond that as well um, you know Rodriguez has, has found success at 108 pounds uh, Utaida has found success at 108 pounds. Argumedo has as well. And then, of course, Gonzalez, you know, need not even be spoken, you know, 108, 112. And now he's trying to get some more glory at, at 115. So, um, you know, Takayama, in, in essence, has uh, made himself into, I guess, where, where you may compare him is to uh, just, you know, a long-standing fighter. Maybe like a, a somewhere between an Orlando Salido, a Glenn Johnson type of a fighter, a guy that had some rugged early fights, has fought the best of the best fighters at his weight class, um, has lost to a few, but has also defeated a few, and um, just, you know, just a solid champion, a guy that's managed to win all four of the major sanctioning body belts, and a guy that's become a champion six different times, I mean, just the fact that he's managed to win world championships, win at the top level, at the elite level, after having lost before, tells you something about the man's character at the very least, if not the man's skills as well. You know, his dedication to the sport, his um, just dedication to uh, being the best that he can be, even if sometimes it's not quite good enough um, to beat his, uh, his fellow peers, his you know, fellow elites. Um, but, you know, he's been around for a long time. I think uh, there's a possibility that he may be around for several more years as well. He's a very good fighter. He hasn't really appeared to slow down. Still has quick hands, still has quick feet, still has skills that I think he's actually sharpened up over the years. And, um, I mean, just a guy that uh, potentially actually may even be moving up to 108 pounds himself to uh, test himself and try and win, you know, a second divisional title. Uh, potentially against Akira Yagashi, who of course uh, currently holds one of the belts at 108 pounds. So, that's pretty much uh, all I have to say on Katsunari Takayama. Uh, definitely one of the all-time great uh, strawweights, one of the all-time great mini flyweights. 
and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.